Mr. President. Senator from Oregon. Mr. President, climate disruption is a significant concern for the health of our planet. It's affecting everything from our agriculture, to our economy, to our forests, to our world's glaciers, our ice sheets, and certainly the distribution of the world's insects and the diseases that they carry. President Trump's decision to withdraw from the Paris Agreement has attracted additional attention to the role that America should play in taking on this major challenge. How significant are the impacts of climate disruption to our forests and our farming and our fishing? What are the business opportunities of transforming an economy from that based on fossil fuels to that based on clean and renewable energy? What are other nations doing? And how fast do we need to move to save the planet? There will be many scholarly speeches on these topics here on the floor, many informed by the experiences that senators have in their home states, both in the evolution of wind and solar energy and the changes that they're seeing in their forests and their farming and their fishing. I hope to draw attention and hopefully insights on these issues in a more lighthearted fashion by presenting periodic episodes of a Senate climate disruption quiz. And today, I'm presenting episode number one of this disruption quiz series. So let's get started. Question number one is, which famous CEO resigned from three presidential councils after President Trump announced that the United States would withdraw from the Paris Agreement? Was it Bob Igor of Disney? Was it Elon Musk of Tesla and SpaceX? Was it Travis Kalanick, the CEO of Uber? Consider which of these individuals made this decision. The right answer is Elon Musk. So congratulations if that's what you guessed. Now Bob Igor of Disney, he resigned from a presidential council, but he only resigned from one, not three. He resigned from the President's Strategic and Policy Forum. And he has been quite significant in putting forward other environmental issues, such as the zero waste of Disney's theme parks. And he said when he resigned, he said, quote, protecting our planet and driving economic growth are critical to our future, and they aren't mutually exclusive. He continued, I deeply disagree with the decision to withdraw from the Paris Agreement. Travis Kalanick, the controversial and besieged Uber CEO also resigned from the same council, the Presidential Strategic and Policy Council. But he did so in response to the President's Muslim ban, not to the announcement that the United States would withdraw from the Paris Agreement. And that takes us to Elon Musk, who resigned from three councils the President's Strategic and Policy Forum, the Manufacturing Initiative, and the Infrastructure Council. He tweeted, M departing presidential councils, climate change is real, leaving Paris is not good for America or for the world. All right, so that's the first question. Now get ready to see if you can answer the second question correctly. As of today, which two countries are not party to the Paris Agreement. Is it Syria and, Ni and Nicaragua? Is it Iran and North Korea, two members of the axis of evil? Togo and Indonesia? Or India and Cambodia? And I'm sure you've heard climate news about all of these countries. But you may not know which ones are the only two countries in the world who are not members of the Paris Agreement. And by the way, the United States is not on this list because even though we have announced we're withdrawing, that takes some time and we're actually still a member. So 
So the correct answer is Syria and Nicaragua. Nicaragua hasn't signed on because they don't believe the Paris Agreement goes far enough in its fight against climate disruption. Today, more than half of Nicaragua's electricity comes from renewable resources, wind, solar, wave, and geothermal. And the government of Nicaragua predicts that within a few years, the percent of electricity from renewables will rise to 80%. Because of the abundance of these resources, a 2013 World Bank report labeled Nicaragua, quote, a renewable energy paradise. And the reason that Syria didn't participate or sign on to the Paris Agreement is because it's in the midst of a horrific six-year-long civil war that has claimed the lives of 300,000 men, women, and children and driven millions out of the country. Okay, now we'll turn to question number three. And that question is, thanks in part to warmer temperatures and milder winters, cases of which tick-borne illness have more than doubled since 1991? Is the answer Colorado tick fever? or tularemia, or Lyme disease, or heartland virus. By the way, all these are real diseases. Well now, Colorado tick fever is a viral infection that is mostly found in the mountain areas of western United States and Canada, and is transmitted by the bite of an infected Rocky Mountain wood tick. Tularemia, which is also known as rabbit fever, or deer fly fever, or obaris fever, is certainly a scary sounding disease. Lyme disease, often transmitted or mostly transmitted by deer tick bites, and predominantly found in the Northeast and Upper Midwest and Mid-Atlantic regions of the country. And then Heartland virus, which is transmitted by the Lone Star tick. Well, the correct answer is, Drum roll. C, Lyme disease. Since 1991, the number of cases of Lyme disease in the United States has doubled. Approximately 30,000 people are diagnosed with the disease each year, but because it's very difficult to diagnose, the Center for Disease Control thinks the real number of cases is about 10 times that, or 300,000 people per year here in the United States. The main reason for the increase we've seen in Lyme disease, warmer temperatures and milder winters. Cold winters kill ticks. Warm winters don't. That's what it boils down to. Okay, so on to question number four. The question is, who was recently quoted saying, quote, the fuel of choice right now, certainly for us, is wind. Was it Bono, the lead singer of U2 and founder of the One Campaign, known for its activist work in Africa? Was it Gwyneth Paltrow, the award-winning actress? Was it Ben Folke, the CEO of Excel Energy? which owns and operates 13 coal plants around the country? Or was it Pope Francis, who gave our president a copy of his encyclical when the president visited with him just a few weeks ago? Well, it turns out the answer is C the CEO of Excel Energy. That's a little bit surprising, given that they operate more than a dozen coal plants. But it also is a company that generates one-fifth of its electricity from wind. In January, the company shut down a large natural gas plant in Colorado for two days, and wind, on average, provided the power for half of its customer demand. Wind is Excel's fuel of choice because once you have the turbines built, the cost of the fuel to operate the turbines is zero. 
The fuel, plainly speaking, is free. And that's what led him to this comment saying that it's a preferred choice. Anytime you can get free fuel, it beats gearing up your coal plant or your natural gas plant. And now we'll turn to question number five, our final, final question. The power minister of which country recently announced that it is planning to sell only electric cars by the year 2030? Was the answer India, which is home to 1.3 billion citizens, the world's third largest oil importer, and a country with 300 million individuals who don't have access yet to electricity? Was it Germany, a manufacturing powerhouse, who has had a large feed-in tariff, a subsidy, if you will, to encourage distributed solar, solar panels on the tops of commercial buildings and, and homes? Was it China? China, where the use of cars has absolutely exploded and the pollution in Beijing is among the worst pollution in the world, driven largely by the combustion of fossil fuels. Or was it Canada? Canada, which has a new tr Prime Minister, Prime Minister Trudeau, who has prioritized tackling climate disruption. Well, if you guessed Germany, you're almost right, but not quite. Germany's Bundesrat, the country's upper legislative chamber, passed a non-binding resolution last October calling for a phase-out of gasoline-powered vehicles by 2030. But that's not the question quite that was, was asked. The question is which country's power minister said they would only sell electric cars by the year 2030? And the answer to that is India. Speaking at this year's annual conference of the Confederation of Indian Industry, Power Minister Goyal said, quote, we are going to introduce electric vehicles in a very big way. We are going to make electric vehicles self-sufficient. The idea is that by 2030, not a single petrol or diesel car should be sold in the country. India, by the way, is already on track to be the world's third largest solar market, with the country's solar capacity expected to reach 18.7 gigawatts by the year's end. The country is also adding 50% more solar and wind generation than currently installed here in the United States. They're replacing 770 million street and household lights with energy saving and long lasting LEDs. And they're bringing access to electricity to the thousands of poor rural villages through the provision of solar. And they're doing all this faster than anyone could have anticipated. So that's the full five questions for this week's Senate Climate Disruption Quiz. Climate disruption is a seminal challenge to our generation. We need to start taking strong, decisive action now to avoid reaching the point where the damage we're doing to our planet becomes irreversible. Thank you, Mr. President.